All right, so it's fall um, across the country, obviously, uh, and uh, weather's kind of weird, but it was cold this morning, so I decided I wanted some bread, but I was going to make it myself. So I'm not sure how adventurous you folks are, but if you follow this recipe just as I'm sharing it, you'll be able to make it. So, And you don't need a lot of space. You really don't. Um, but I'll tell you this much. The space will dictate the size of the loaves that you make, okay? So... Um, with that in mind, on the menu with Chef Will Gote, uh, French bread, and I'm going to say Puerto Rican style. <laughs> Why? Because it's me. I'm not going to show you how to measure stuff. Like, you know, you need to have a couple little measuring cups and you know that you need to have these kinds of measuring cups. And these are the condiment cups. And then you've got uh, the teaspoons, um, which, hold on a second. And you got teaspoons. And these are things you should have, all right? And I shouldn't have to remind you about it. Um, and if I do, like, I don't know, go watch another video. I don't know what to tell you. But you, I don't have to tell you how to measure stuff. You should know that by now, okay? So um, here we go. Uh, in the bowl, I have three cups of all-purpose flour. And I have one cup of the bread flour. To this, I'm going to add two tablespoons of kosher salt, all right? That's it on the dry ingredients. So now I'm going to put together the wet ingredients. Okay, a quick note about yeast. Um, when you're working with yeast, and that's not baking powder or baking soda, those are all leaveners. When you're working with yeast, the temperature of the water that you use, that you use is really important. It should be like between 110 and 114. Now, that's really important because if you go over that temperature, you're going to kill the yeast. If you go under that temperature, it's not going to become active, all right? So uh, make sure that you have that. And the key ingredient is sugar or honey. In this recipe, it's honey. Um, the honey feeds the yeast, it bubbles, and all that. So let me show you how that goes. So we got uh, two tablespoons of honey. And here's the hot water. And that's a half a cup. Now I'll tell you this, when you uh, buy honey, uh, consider getting organic. Um, it's a little more expensive, but it's really worth it. The flavor is amazing. And be careful with what kind of honey you buy. Like don't get the orange or the clover honey, just get regular raw honey organic that's ready see so this is too hot all right but i'm okay because i wanted to dissolve the honey i gotta wait for it to drop to 114. here we're mixing the salt and the flour all right so this is perfect now we add the yeast and we leave it five minutes five minutes later your yeast should look like this See, it's foamy, it's perfect. Now you're gonna add a cup of warm water. And when I say warm water, I mean, try to make sure the water is not any hotter than 114, okay? Because you don't wanna kill the yeast. It's science, folks. So um, just measure that cup out and set it aside and you just, you just want it warm. Now, um, as far as flowers go, not every flower is the same. This is actually a really good flower to use for baking. It's called King Arthur, all right? Um, and their all-purpose flour generally is healthier in that it, it is higher in, see that? Higher in protein, okay? So um, just know that. And it's really a good high-quality flour. So get, get this one. So here we are. We add the yeast to the flour. Bubbled up perfectly. And now I add the warm water. So uh, the dough bowl has to form. So you saw that the KitchenAid has the, by the way, the best mixers, KitchenAid. Um, and uh, I have the dough hook on it. Okay, the the, uh, the hook that's on it right now is the dough hook. So I'm going to let that run for about four or five minutes until it comes together as a ball. All right, so this is, when you see it pulls away from the bowl, right? This is a good dough. I'm going to let it knead like this for about four or five minutes. Actually, five to six minutes. Once it forms a ball, you got to take it out. Then you got to knead it five or six minutes by hand. You're going to split the dough into the desired loaves or rolls that you want. Um, and then uh, you're going to proof them, all right? So I warm my oven up at the lowest setting. Uh, and then I turn it off so that it's just warm enough to, to help in the, uh, the rising, all right?
It has risen. All right, so safety is off there. Okay. Up goes. And here you go. Check out the dough. Oh my God, it's perfect. Look. See? Yay! All right. Oh, well, believe it or not, um, my I got I'm limited on counter space. So I'm going to put this on my cutting board with some flour. I'll show you the steps as best I can because I only got two hands. I'm kneading. Kneading. I'll show you what it looks like in a minute. All right, now that the kneading is done, okay, um, I'm gonna put it in this bowl that I'm oiling because I don't want it to get stuck as it rises. So I wanna spin the ball in all of the oil. Now I'm gonna cover it with plastic and put it in the warm oven. Now it goes in the warm oven. Thirty minutes. Now we clean up. Now, while that first proofing happens, because we're going to proof it twice, um, while that first proofing happens, we're going to prep the pan, which isn't anything. I'm going to use parchment paper, uh, but it is recommended that if you have cornmeal, um, you can put it on the pan on top of the, you know, to put to lay the bread on while it bakes. Um, and of course, that adds to the texture. So here's the uh, baking sheet that I'm using for the bread. I'm going to put the parchment paper on it. Um, I am going to spray it just a quick little bit, and I do have cornmeal. All right, here we go. So, excellent. Look at that. Doubled in size, so I'm going to punch it down, and then I'm going to divide it. All right, so I got two loaves, so I'm splitting, the, I split the loaf in two, and then one half I split in two, right? And on this one, I've made the rectangle, and I'm going to actually knead in some chorizo, which is soy, uh, see how that works out. <laughs> and now this, I'm gonna fold over like here. See, like half, okay. Roll it out. Then fold the bottom half over. Pound it down. Then I'm gonna roll this up. All right, so this is what the loaf looks like when I rolled it. The ends, I pinch it and fold it under, and now it goes on the pan. I need to score the top on both of them. And this here. And I'm gonna do a few little scores on this one. Now it gets a second proofing in a warm oven for uh, 25 minutes. So check that out. See, that's the second rising. All right. I am now going to cover them with a towel and heat the oven to 450. And again, if you have another area where you can rise the dough, that's good. Do that. Uh, but my house is a little drafty and that'll kind of mess it up. So anyway, here we go. Looking good. So I am going to spray the bread a little bit this is just water i'm just spraying it with some filtered water so that it has a nice crust here it goes all right 15 minutes <laughs> now we wait <laughs> you never know you just never know um and like i said my house is drafty so breads and stuff like that are not easy anyway oh wow well. Look at the bread. They're actually looking pretty good. You know? We'll let them cool off. These are looking pretty good. Yum. Bread. Homemade. You hear about that thump? The chorizo baguette that I made is uh, perfect, too. Look at that. These are perfect. See? Perfect. And I didn't need a machine. Mm. Yeah, try this. 
follow the steps just like I told you. Wow. Have a great day. Chef Well, on the menu with me. Homemade French bread. It's good toasted too.